Welcome to the newest episode of The Process of Fat Loss, where our goal is to help you understand the best way to lose fat and live a healthier lifestyle. Join us as we discuss some of the toughest and most valuable topics in health and fitness. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the easiest and least expensive things you can do for your health and your fat loss journey, and that is walking. Uh, if you've been around GCP for long enough and done or done any of our uh, nutrition coaching or accountability programs, you know that one of the first things we always emphasize is daily activity and daily movement, which is usually walking. Um, and I don't know if I would go as far to say that it's the golden ticket to fat loss, but when it doesn't cost you anything and it only takes 30 minutes of your time every day, um, it isn't too far off from that. Uh, but this is one concept that we sometimes see a lot of fight back about. So Trevor, why don't you go ahead and give us some background for why we're talking about walking? Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, so if I told you walking is a great tool for fat loss, what would your initial reaction be? My guess is most people would probably be like, it's not intense enough. I won't burn enough calories, or I might think it's really only for obese people. Well, today I'm going to explain really why we recommend it for all of our clients, regardless of their maintenance stage, they're trying to gain muscle, lose fat, anything of that nature. We recommend it for every person, no matter what their, their current weight is or what their goal is. So like you alluded to before, a common belief about walking is that it isn't intense enough to be beneficial for fat loss. And I've heard people say that walking is for people who aren't fit enough to do more intense exercises, like you mentioned. So can you speak to the intensity of walking and how that factors into using it as part of the process of fat loss? Yeah, the number one reason we, why we recommend wa uh, walking as a tool for weight loss is because it's low impact exercise. We already recommend you doing strength training three days a week, which is a higher impact um, type of training. So we have to keep that lower impact so it's more beneficial. We have too high of impact too often, we're going to end up with issues. So low impact movements reduce inflammation from exercise and they have a lower injury risk. No matter the age you are, these are important, but because, but the more you become, uh, sorry, but become even more, <laughs> more important for fat loss as we age. These become more important for fat loss as we age. With high inflammation, our joints hurt more and possibly even more other body parts which can make making doing more exercise tougher and less enjoyable with walking. You can do it seven days a week with little repercussions from it. Higher impact movements, such as running, jumping, lifting too often, or other sports can have high injury risk to them as well. That risk is totally worth it. If your goal is to be good at those sports and because you know, if you also want to get those skills from those sports, right? So a lot of times when it comes down to sports, people are like, it's a sport. So if you want to take the risk of being better at that sport, you're going to have to have some risk to that. But for most people, they don't want to take that risk. The setback of the time that you would take away from working on your fat loss to progress on those uh, goals might actually derail your goals in progress. Another thing that I hear all the time about walking is that it doesn't burn enough calories. And uh, after all, how many calories can you really burn in a 30 minute low to moderate intensity exercise, right? So why do you believe that it is still a great tool for health and fat loss, even though it's commonly you know, thought of that you aren't going to burn enough calories from that? I mean, compared to running, swimming, biking, it, it doesn't burn as many calories, though. Simple. And I'll always be honest with people that it's not going to be the highest calorie burn thing that you're going to have. But the part that people discount is the ability to be able to do it seven days a week, 365 days a year. I guess in Illinois, it's might not be 365 days a year unless you have a treadmill in your house. But the idea is you really could get away with it every single day forever. And you probably won't have any impact of that. But there's a lot of, in terms of negative impacts in terms of injury or some of that nature. But you will get tons of calorie burn from it. So when we discuss low impact part from before, the most of the exercises will be tough to do every single day because they'll have that long-term impact on the body. Inflammation will increase. Our body will start to hurt more. Injuries are more possible. Um, we just can't. We're sore every single day. Um, so that's why like mo walking is such a good one because it's still low impact swimming and possibly biking could also be done, um, because they are relatively low impact things, but people don't always have access to a pool seven days a week Bike everybody doesn't have a bike. So walking is just so simple because it doesn't, like Nick said earlier, it doesn't cost anything. Um, with, you know, also with biking, you gotta be very cautious with lower back issues. Um, because it's a really hip dominant movement, you're in this hold in hip position and that's tough in the lower back. So people have to be careful there. Whereas with walking, we really don't have a lot of negative issues from that um you do have you know some people if they are heavier they might not be able to walk as often but people that are lighter or working towards their goals can walk quite a bit without overexerting themselves so looking back to the concept of low impact exercise that we talked about at the beginning uh, from a physiological perspective how does walking being such low impact benefit the body so 
cortisol is an important thing. So um, we're going to talk about that is really what it comes down to being. So lowering your cortisol levels comes with a lower impact idea. So when we have lower impact on the body, the lower our cortisol is going to be. If you put less stress in your body, it won't increase the st that stress hormone. So cortisol is a stress hormone. Um, it, what it does is it increases your appetite and shifts your metabolism into fat storing mode, which is something that none of us want to do. We don't want to increase our body fat. And then also increasing your appetite, it can be very dangerous in the long run as well. Higher stress levels can also impact the mind. So like the more physically stressed out you are from activity, the more mental stress it puts on your body. And this is part of that allostatic load. So when it comes down to an allostatic load is that the total amount of stress that you have on your body, we don't want to add more stress to that plate. And so we want to make sure that we keep our exercise level in a controllable amount so our allostatic load doesn't get too high. Um, now you have to talk yourself... Now you have uh, to talk yourself into a hard workout. Um, sorry if you guys are hearing in the background, my puppy's doing a little bit of whining. <laughs> so um, uh, sorry if it's coming through the mic. But um, so sorry, well, let me get back on path here. So uh, so you, you might have to, with the stressful workouts, you might have to talk yourself into doing a hard workout, which is a grind, right? The grind of training. A lot of people, when they work out six days a week, just get exhausted. It's just too much training and mentally it becomes hard. But walking is one of those things that we can work out, strength train three days a week, and we uh, do the walking on the other four days a week and we get that benefit of being able to say, okay, I don't have to be in this stress physical state all the time worrying about having to do these intense workouts. Um, so it's just a great way to think about how to reduce stress. Now moving forward from the fat loss uh, category, once you're in a position where you maybe have reached your fat loss goals and you can handle more intense exercises, should walking still be a regular part of daily activity or um, should you add in other things? Yeah, um, I think walking should be part of the thing forever. Once you achieve your fat loss goal, you should not stop walking. You should be doing it for, I mean, I would say the rest of your life realistic. It's so beneficial for so many different things. Um, if you want to play a sport and you want to do something, some more intense hobbies like um, mountain biking or climbing or, or tons of like high level walking, uh, hiking, um, you might need to reduce that a little bit and you need to can amp those up and have those higher intensity things. But realistically on those off days, when you're not doing the entire and high intensity training, you, it's totally fine to be able to do, to do walking on those days. And you probably should be doing walking on those days. Um, I wouldn't recommend when you're doing this high intensity stuff. So meaning like if you do go in the high intensity stuff, you don't want to do it more than five days a week. And realistically, I think three or four days a week is what most people as they age should be doing in terms of high intensity. So the way to do that on the opposite side is you should be doing walking on the other days. So if you're doing that in high intensity things, you just need to have walking more. So I do think walking is great for maintenance because the idea is it keeps the lower impact stuff on the days when you're on the days that you're not doing the high impact stuff. So at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that walking is free and easy. So how can our listeners incorporate that simple tool into their lives and get walking on a more consistent basis? Um, simple things, walk your dog. And I think when I say walk your dog, it needs to have a little bit of purpose to it, right? It's not a leisurely just going out and walking. We do got to make sure that you, after they go potty, try to take them for a nice little walk after that. Um, walk during your lunch or your break times. So you guys have those. You should have those at work, no matter what. You should have a little bit of time. Cool part is you probably have some friends there at work, uh, some coworkers at work that need to do some walking as well. So get them involved in it. Um, walk with your friends and family. Um, it's a great way to connect after a long day. Of, like me and Erica, every single day when she comes home from work, me, her, and Duke go for a walk. It's just a chance for her to like talk about her day, the things that went on, and it gave us gives us a nice little chance to connect every single night. Plus, we get our fitness in a little bit. Um, and then another nice thing for me, I take an afternoon walk, usually 15 minutes, and that gives me a chance to listen to my book or podcast as well to be able to get like more of that like content-based stuff in. It gets my mind thinking. It's really good as an entrepreneur. It gets my mind kind of free and clear of like doing just activity and allows me to kind of focus on and get my the higher thinking ideas going on. So walking is a great tool for that because you get those endorphins released at the same time. So what's your main point that people can take away from our discussion today? Um, don't overlook walking just because it's not super intense. Doesn't mean it can't add value. Um, it's more about the consistency of, and the ability to be able to do it seven days a week is why walking is such so valuable compared to many other activities is you don't get a lot of negative effects from walking and people don't ever think about the negative effects from exercise, but there is negative effects from too much and walking just doesn't have any of those negative effects. It's, so, it's such a beneficial tool. So, yeah, so thanks for sharing those, those practical ways we can uh, introduce, you know, kind of incorporate walking a little bit more. Um, I hope you guys listening have enjoyed the discussion of today's topic. Remember, the best time to start living healthier is today. So make sure to take the things that we talked about um, and take action in them right away.
If you enjoyed our episode, please make sure to give us a review, uh, subscribe. You can follow us on social media as well. Keep up to new episodes and things like that, um, as well as um, following us on podcasts uh, wherever you're listening to us so you can keep up to date on new episodes. Uh, if you have any ideas for topics, anything that you want us to discuss, or any questions you have, you can always message us, uh, send us an email. You can leave a comment, um, and we'll try to answer those questions for you guys, maybe do an episode about them. Uh, but thanks again for listening. I hope you guys will join us for the next episode of The Process of Fat Loss.